such pain and blood in a cup good evening my name is Vlad oh hello I'm Isabella would you like to come and ride in my black carriage we can see the countryside look at all the beautiful scenery and listen to the children of the night oh yeah that sounds wonderful let me just go get my things Yes! What up, players? Vlad von Karstein up in this mud. Today, my friend Warbus Tay will teach you how to paint one of these. Kaboo! That's right, players. It's a less armored skeleton for all my vampire accounts. Viewers out there, or for anybody getting into these guys now, it's um, one of your rank and file skeletons that you're going to be painting for your units. So, um, let me just talk to you a little bit about the colors that I used. And I've got them all here. Starting from this, from the bone, I used Denip Stone. Boom, Denip Stone. Then I think I painted the reds, which were done in Mechrite Red. And then I painted the silvers, which were done in Bolt Gun Metal. And then I gave it all a wash, and the wash that I used was only one because this is meant. This tutorial is meant for those of you who are painting huge, huge amounts of these guys. So I tried to keep it as simple as possible. Bad dab black, and then I painted. Um, oh, I think I painted the leather also as well. Calvin Brown leather, meaning the belts, the straps. This this guy's got a scabbard, so I painted that as well. The Calton Brown is also going to be used as a base for the Shining Gold Helmet, which of course you don't need to use. You can if you want. Then I highlighted with Blood Red. I also painted some Lich Purple bits. You're going to need Chaos Black for painting black scraps of uniform that haven't rotted away, as well as painting the inside of the shield. And then getting onto the highlights. Bleached bone along with Deneb stone and skull white for your bones. We use chain mail to highlight the silver bits. And finally, after all that is said and done, some beautiful hawk turquoise to give us a rusty patina, decrepit, vertigris look. So, this is the standard that I'm going for, and again, like I said, what I'm going for is a quick easy way to paint a whole bunch of models in in your army so this should hopefully give you some some insight as to how I would do my armies for batch painting mainly when you have to get through you know a whole 40 40 unit of these guys as quickly as possible while having while achieving a look that you will be happy with that won't look you know really disgusting when you have to take them out. Something that you won't feel ashamed putting on the table. So I would feel very happy putting this on the table. It's got a bunch of different colors. It's got shading and highlighting. It's got this great vertigris effect on all the metallics and it's really simple to do. So I hope you enjoy the video and I hope you gain some insight from it and we will see you in the next one. All right, my friends, step number one for painting any skeleton, Tomb Kings, Vampire Counts, or whatever, what have you, is you gotta paint the bone because with our less armored skeleton here, the bone is the, really the majority surface on the model. So, the first thing we're gonna paint is our trusty bone base called Deneb Stone from Citadel Foundation. Let me just get my brush here. And for this, for this first step, you don't have to worry about painting 
you know, making any mistakes because we just base coated our model. There's nothing on it and, oh, let's get some more light here. And any mistakes will be painted over. So I've got my trusty cup of water and my trusty paint palette and um, I'm ready to go. If you're going to be doing a huge horde of these guys because in the new Vampire Counts book skeletons are pretty good then this is going to be the quickest way for you to get these guys on the table. Just get a brush and slap that paint on. All you have to do is make sure that your brush, I mean the uh, the paint from the brush doesn't, is, isn't that thick. You don't have to worry about it too much because you're really just going through these guys but you know you, you do not want to just throw your the tip of your brush down to the bottom of the paint pot and then slap it on. You do need to have some kind of control. Although at this first step, like I said, it, you could be very, the, the paint and the model will be very forgiving. We're not doing any kind of detail work yet. We're just covering all the bone areas. No worries if, if you get paint on any other part of the model. I'm even almost kind of dry brushing just to see where the bone parts are separate from the cloth parts. So really there's no real technique at this point. It's just get the paint on the model. I'm even using a really terrible brush uh, because just because Okay, while we're going to let that sit, what, what you should actually be doing to batch paint these is I would suggest that you get all of your bone areas out of the way for whatever, however many models you're doing. So if you are going to paint 10 in one go, then I would put this guy down, pick up the second one, and, and just paint all his bone areas, get, get going to the third one, all the way down the line. And what that's going to do when you batch paint is it allows the paint to dry so that when you get back to the first model the bone should be completely dry but because we're only painting through a single figure today I'm going to continue on to the next step for those of you at home who are painting up an army of these guys when I paint an army project I usually go through at least 20 in a batch especially if I have huge hordes of these things um, like for example if you've got a hundred then um, what I would do is, <laughs> for a hundred, I would really want to get them over with in one go, rather than come back five times. So, as painful as it would be, I would go through this as fast as possible with all 100 guys. And that's just me though, you don't have to do that. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get to work on the metallic areas of the model. So I'm going to first take my bolt gun silver and I'm going to paint or bolt gun metal and I'm going to paint all the silver areas bolt gun metal. There's a great variety of details and no two skeleton models are going to be the same. I guess statistically there there will be skeleton models that will be the same when you match up the lower bodies to the upper bodies to the arms holding the weapons to the to the heads to the um you know I guess statistically bodies will be the same here and there skeletons but for our purposes the point that I'm getting at is that your skeleton may not look like mine you, your skeletons may not have spears 
So in that case, if you've got a hand weapon shield skeleton, then the same principles still apply. Paint the sword in bolt gun metal. For the shield, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the border of the shield in silver. Ooh, look at the, all this awesome decay. And I'm also going to paint the little nubbins in the center silver. Oops. I'm trying to muscle memory where the best spot for. holding the model is. Okay, now I am going to, what I would like to do is paint this guy's helmet in gold. So, I think I'm gonna wait on that though. I'm gonna do the reds first. Step numero three, reds. Vampire counts and um, von Karstein's blood dragons. Love red, so we're gonna find a nice prominent place for our red right here on the shield. Sometimes when I put the paint on first and it comes on in this huge glop of paint, then I will, that's still okay in my, in my opinion because you can drag it across the surface area if you've got a large area. If you're working on small details, it's always best to dab some of that paint off before you put the brush to the model. You just have to. Right. I'm also going to paint the top pennant. scrap of cloth by his hand, which was, I guess, probably part of his old uniform. right angles. Alright, so here's our boy at this point. He's got his bone color, he's got his silver color, he's got his metallics, and um, his the, the red scraps of cloth. We're gonna 
stop and start and in the next section we're gonna get moving on to the leather, the browns, and the gold. Okay, a couple things I, I actually did between then and now while I was cleaning up the model, getting all the areas that I feel I hadn't painted as well as I could if I wasn't filming was that I painted these little flaps on the side of his helmet red to match the rest of it. I also painted little bolt gun metal on the tip of his scabbard there. And I think that was it. I also got started working on the base. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the leather of his, uh, the leather pieces like his belt, his scabbard, um, all that. We're going to paint that with Calton Brown. Now, some of my friends like to use Kemri Brown for leather and, and whatnot, but I feel Calton Brown has a as a darker, the darker color of Calton Brown makes it makes it appeal to me more. Kemri Brown, I feel, is great for doing cloth, such as you know, um, sacks, sack cloth, uh, bags, pouches, that kind of stuff. But Calton Brown, I feel, is a really good base for any kind of leather that you that you do. And so after we paint the scabbard, now the next thing we're going to do is use our Calton Brown and paint the belt that's holding the scabbard to his hip bones. up here. This particular model has two little strips of material so I'm just going to paint the top one and the bottom one I'm going to paint in one of his regimental colors either either red or or purple. Hmm. Got some shadows because of the, uh, the shield. We're also now going to use Calton Brown to actually, yeah, so you know what I was thinking? I was thinking we could do his helmet in like a gold or a bronze, so we'll use our Calton Brown as a base for that so the, so the color will stick to it. If you're doing a hundred of these guys and you're like, I don't want, I want as least amount of work as possible, then you can go ahead and paint this part of the helmet in bolt gun metal and then you can cut out this gold section. For me though, I feel like even if I'm doing a huge horde of guys, um, I would take the time to do an extra step like this just to just so that I'll it, it would make me happy at the end of the at the end of the day. That's why I always take a little bit longer because to me tabletop quality tabletop quality to me is you know something that you want to put on the table and you still want to be proud of. It doesn't have to be master class heavy metal kind of stuff but I, I, I want the person across the table for me to take notice. Okay so next thing I'm going to do is we're going to paint the black parts of, of cloth on the model. So if you saw my Vampire Counts pre-heresy video, you'll see that from the sketches, a lot of the uniform colors that the Sylvanians wore were predominantly black or purple with red accent colors and highlights. Highlights on the accent colors were red. So we have lots of red on our on our skeleton already. <clears throat> 
we don't have any blacks or purples, so this is where we're going to fix that. And like I said, I read in A White Dwarf the last time the vampire counts were issued, were released, I mean, that a couple years ago that they were sculpted to look like they were being blown from behind by a supernatural wind. Because usually with figures, it looks like wind is blowing from the front. So they wanted to do something different with vampire counts and they wanted to make it look like the wind was blowing from behind and kind of pushing them forward because the whole shambling horde motif was really big back then so they had this you know like that it, it was pretty much symbolizing Van Howe's dance macabre spell which was which was used to help them move faster or I can't remember what the old the old version did of Van Howe's okay you're also gonna use your chaos black to paint the inside of the shield and the reason for this is because we want the eye to be attracted to the model and not the inside of this shield. So we're just helping their, helping the viewer's eye be guided towards what we want it to see. Ta-da! Okay. Oh. Somebody's car alarm. It's going off down down the street of my house. Boop, 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 boop. Last thing we're gonna do in this stage is paint the purpley bits. Yeah, you know what? <clears throat> Looking at the model now, I think I'm just gonna paint Captain Brown on all of these leather strip parts. For my Vampire Counts army, I kind of want there to be a a progression when you divide the reds to the to the leather to the I mean, the red to the black to the purple. I kind of want the uh, the eye to see the red most, so that's why I have a lot of red, and then see some black areas like down here, and then some purple is really going to be used to accent. So for purple, we're going to use lich purple and. I'm only really going to paint the bottom pendant because I don't want the person looking at my army to think that the purple is overpowering. You just want it to be a, an accent color. Just kind of opposite from the Vampire Counts article that I read. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to paint shining gold onto the helmet. Shining gold. Ta-da! Done. Nice and simple. Okay, next we're going to do the washes, which is my favorite part. So for the body, we are going to wash with Bad at Black. This is actually going to go for the body and for all the metallics. And by body, I mean bone structure. So you kind of want to guide it into, into the shadows, to the little recesses. Between the 
finger bones. Just like that. Now what I'm being careful of is that if you miss any parts, then they stay unshaded and then when the wash dries, it's a very obvious difference between what you were able to hit and what you didn't. So you want to be able to take your model and hold it from a bunch of different angles so that, oh no, the black on the shield is still wet. That's okay. We'll highlight that later. What was I saying? Oh yeah, um, you want to hold your model from a bunch of different angles and that way you'll notice like, oh I gotta hit the... forgot to shade this part or I need to get into here under his helmet at the red flaps under his armpits all that kind of stuff. I just noticed that there's this strip of cloth that I haven't painted yet. So I'm gonna go back and do that in just a minute. Alright, I'm gonna jump to the next section. Hey, sorry about that, I had to cut that short or else my uh, camera was gonna explode. Can't go too long. So the last things we're gonna do is we're gonna paint bad at black onto the metallic areas now and that includes our gold and silver so I'm gonna start with the blade up here at the top I just want to make sure it doesn't pool because when you're shading flat surfaces like this it's really easy for you to just kind of miss doing something like that where the shade pools in one area and we don't really want that so we are going to spread it around spread it out just like that okay and get some some of this fantastic black wash and get to work on the shaft if you're using a sword and a shield then same rules apply, you just paint it, um, paint the bad at black wash on to the sword. The blade and the hilt and you get the same thing. Okay, next I'm also gonna paint the reds. Not as heavily though, but we do want some shading on our red areas, our red cloth and whatnot. And on the leather. So we're going to start with the leather here, the scabbard. Uh, I just realized this, this model has a scabbard, um, but not a sword. Where's your sword, Fritz? Oh, you can't talk. You can't talk like my other models because you don't have vocal cords. You can only rattle. <laughs> I was right about to come up with a, with a funny German voice for you, but you're a skeleton, so you don't have a voice. Okay, so what I did there was I just put some black wash on his shield. I'm gonna double check that all the other areas are suitably washed. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. There. I wasn't even looking at the screen for the last minute. I hope, I hope you saw what I did. So I did the leather here, the leather back here, making sure that the wash is in all the recesses. This is the most fun part, I think at this red area right there. It's the most fun for me. I love doing washes. Washes is awesome. And 
then I'm gonna hit his helmet here. And I think I'm gonna make sure you don't get any bubbles. So we've got bad at black wash pretty much everywhere. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let my model sit. Now if you're doing a huge horde of these guys, you know, your 100, 100 man horde, then this is awesome because by the time you get back to the first guy, it'll be dried. For me, since I'm only doing one model here, I'm going to have to wait a while. So I'm going to find something else to do, maybe I'll play a little Skyrim. and. Um, when I get back, the wash should be dried. You want at least, you know, sometimes they say like an hour, but if you check, check back in in like half an hour, like I've got a lamp here, so, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm able to see when I come back, is it really dry? Because sometimes some wash is tricky and uh, the wash in the deep recesses like down here in the hip bones will still be wet, but it'll everything will look dry. So you really gotta check to make sure because the, the worst thing in the world is getting moving on to you know your highlighting section and when you start painting again having some of that wash that wasn't dry smear across um, your paintbrush with all the newly loaded paint up and then everything gets all messed up so you really really have to be careful and make sure that your model is completely dry before moving on to the next step and you might see that the Bada Black wash also is really shiny so that's um, because of the consistency, you know, of the of the water or the glazing medium to the to the paint in the wash, so that that'll help you for all you new paper painters. Just look to see if your model looks like it's still wet or shiny, and if it's not, then you're ready to move on to the next section. Okay, I went and had myself a hamburger happy meal, and now the wash is dried, and I am ready to continue. So. As you can see, the washes went fairly into all of the recesses in the skeleton structure, and that's just what we want. So we're going to start painting and highlighting the skeleton's bones back up. Oh, look at that mold line. There's a terrible mold line right there. I'm going to clean that up right now. The thing with these skeletons is that it's it's not that easy sometimes seeing where those mold lines are until <laughs> until the wash is in. All right, so we're gonna start using our denim stone, and we're gonna start highlighting back up, leaving the wash in the shadows. So what I'm doing is I'm starting from the the areas that are the most prominent, like the shoulder bone or the shoulder joint, and down here the elbow joint, and then I'm painting upwards so that it looks like the areas that have the most paint are the ones that are being really hit by the light, if that makes any sense. So take a look at that arm. Do the same down here. Just lightly, lightly touching up. And so what you're doing with the denim stone is that on your wet palette, you're putting the paint down and putting a little bit of water on it to thin down the paint. And then wiping it off on your paper towel or napkin before going back to work.
Now if you've got a bunch of skeletons to paint up, then you might want to just do a dry brushing effect. And that's totally fine. For me, I'm going to do a little bit more fine detail work. But I'll show you in a second if you want to dry brush. I'll show you how to do that. So if you want a dry brush, especially on the rib cage, then you just make sure that you've got some paint loaded onto your brush tip, and then you want to wipe off the majority of it so that when you are, there's my hand, so that when you wipe your brush on your hand, you don't really see anything. So here I just dip my tip in some, some paint and now when I'm wiping it on my hand I want to get it so that only some paint is left on the brush. Then you just drag it from the top to the bottom. Sorry. Let's try that one more time. You drag it from the top the bottom. You could do this not just on the rib cage, but if you're really moving fast, you could do this on the entire model. You don't have to paint it in like I've been doing, but just be aware that if you do, unless you have really good brush control, your model is going to tend to end up looking kind of dusty, which works with Toon Kings. Um, because because of you know what they are, but you might want a more cleaner look for your vampire counts. But here I'm just showing you what it looks like to to dry brush your model. You might notice that it has kind of a dusty effect to it. If you don't want that and would rather spend the time to to paint in your, your models, then I kind of showed you how to do that too. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean off my brush. I'm going to get started painting more highlights now with bleached bone. Taking a little bit of paint right onto the tip and then wiping off the majority of it. The thing with highlights is you don't need that much on the brush. You're just working off of what is already there, so you don't want to see a whole new color. If that makes any sense, you just want a hint of it. Now when you're getting into these highlight colors and you're working on the rib cage, what I've found works best because the light is coming from above, the light is only going to be catching the top parts of these bones, so I'm only painting like near the tops, so I'm not going to be really worrying too much about down here except for like here these joints that really obviously pop out. I got a little of the bleach bone on here. 
clean most of it off on my napkin. Then come back into work. And if you feel like you put too much down, then all you really have to do is drag it across. Drag the paint out so that it spreads out across your surface area and that should do the trick. Otherwise you might want to go back and paint the uh, color that you used beforehand just to clean it up. Here, like for the finger bones and just lightly brushing over And here for the rib cage, I'm going to be doing the same thing, just kind of lightly brushing over the denim stone. So down here, the more, the most um, prominent parts of the leg bones. There we go. There. Okay, next we're going to, the last highlight we're going to do, which um, if you're doing a hundred of these guys, you probably won't want to do this highlight, but if you do, it's just really, really little skull white. And so for this, you're really just going to use the barest amount and points of the bone structure is. So when I'm looking at the back, I'm thinking, you know, most of this is fine already. I'm just going to hit the tops of the shoulder bones. Down here by the elbows. Across the shoulder blades. Because you don't want it to hide the colors you've already highlighting the reds. So now we're going to start highlighting the red and we're going to use our blood red for that. And again when highlighting we're just taking a little bit onto the tip of our brush. And I'm going to get started with the little scraps of cloth on the side of our guy's helmet piece there. You want to take note of where the bad black ended up and you only want to paint around it. There's no sense in really undoing the work that your wash did. So I'm only going to be painting on the areas that the light is hitting the most. blood red really pops so you really don't have to worry about 
putting too much of it. And you're only painting on enough to show the viewer where you want them to look. Where do you want them to draw? Where do you want their eye to be drawn to? Just like that. Uh, Igor. Yes, Master. Focus the camera, Igor. I'm sorry, Master. I was watching Pretty Little Liars. Stop watching that show and get back on the camera. You have to keep the model in focus. Sorry, Master. Alright, so now I'm working on the shield as you can see, and I'm going to try to keep my highlights here in the center, since most of the wash has pulled to the side. You really have to be careful with your amount of paint. Brush control here at this part because this is a completely flat surface. so. It's better to have less paint on your brush and have to do multiple applications than to have a big messy dollop of paint in the center. So then everybody's gonna laugh at you. The Skaven army you're fighting is gonna run over and destroy you and laugh at your horrible paint job and nobody wants that. There we go. Yeah, really nice. If I do say so myself, it's not bad. Okay, next we're going to highlight the metallics. So once you've finished painting, uh, cleaning the paint off of your brush, we're going to start with chain mail. And all we're doing is, I'm actually going to use a medium dry brush that my good friend Lost Soul was nice enough to 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 send to me because this stuff dry brushes are great. The heads are the bristles are compacted all together. There's a lot of them, but they're you know there's there's not much length to them, which is really good because when you're dry brushing, then all the paint is kind of centralized in one area. Okay, so I'm gonna hold my my figure up to a light source and I'm gonna decide, okay, where do I want the light to be reflecting off the length of the spear? And I've decided that it's gonna be right here. So I'm going to dry brush in the same direction, diagonally is best. And also hit the sides up here as well. And from the back, I've decided it's going to be here. This way, whenever somebody picks up your model and turns it, the light will always glint off this chainmail that you're applying in the same area. Consistent highlighting. And when you get to the edge, to the spear tip, you just want to gently dry brush. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to 
just drag our dry brush over the rim. You could do this with a detail brush as well. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Some chain mail on my detail brush. And wipe off the majority of it. So we're kind of doing like a dry dry brushing. Just like when we did the the rib cage. And see I'm not really painting it, I'm just kind of moving my brush over the metallic area. Focus Igor. Sorry master. I'm also gonna take my chain mail and I'm going to lightly dry brush over the gold helmet so that you have a little bit of a silvery reflection right there on the edges. Looks very nice, Mass. Oh, shut up, Igor. Are you still mad at me for watching Pretty Little Liars? Yes. You need to be behind this camera when I'm filming. Okay, next we're going to paint Vertigris. Hawk Turquoise. Taking a little bit of it and really watering it down so that it doesn't um, so that it moves around on the model so I'm gonna take my hot turquoise water it down get rid of most of it onto a paper towel and then I'm just going to paint into and around these recesses these pocked pitted holes in the shield to show rust and age and decay. I'm also going to be painting around the rivets just a little bit and around areas where the metal meets metal to show where this that patina of verdigris And you can really be as as liberal or as conservative as you want in this part. Some people love to just rust up their equipment by painting on lots of this verdigris. Other people prefer not to because they feel like it ruins their, their shading and their highlighting work. Personally, myself, I think it's fine to add more. because the model already is so, has such little color to it as it is that I'm gonna find as much opportunities to add color to it as I can. Like up here I'm using my patina to paint in areas that the metal meets other parts of it, where the rain or liquid condensation would have gathered and and uh, dried so over the years that rainfall and condensation has decayed the structure of the metal. See how that looks? Alright, and that is just about it. For my model, I'm going to base it and we'll finish up the video in just a second. And there you have it, players. Here's one of your skeletons for your Vampire Count's army. Less armored, so the majority of it is bone. You can take this and you can also use it for Tomb Kings as well. Tomb Kings, I found, instead of Bad Eye Black, if you want to use a wash, then which you should, then you should use Devlin Mud or Griffin Sepia because that will give you more of a sandblasted look. But for, for vampire counts, dark, gothic, uh, I think Bad Eye Black really works really well. Combined with the highlights of Den of Stone, Bleached Bone, and Skull White, like look at the, look at the transition there. I think that's, that's really going to look good from across the table. So this is what I would consider a tabletop quality figure because you go through a bunch of different stages. You go through the base coats, you go through the 
washes and then you have a bunch of successive highlighting that doesn't look like it was done you know by a nine-year-old so <laughs> no offense to any nine-year-olds who watch my videos but um, I this is a good standard for me if you're gonna paint a hundred of these guys my my advice is keep it fun you know you want it to be fun you don't want painting to be something that you dread every you know every time that you sit down at the painting table so the way that I keep it fun is that I I paint my model by um, in layers in levels that I, I find you know uh, f fun and appealing so after the boring base coat of Den of Stone then I find good colors that will pop against it like the red and the purple and then doing the metallics and getting to the washes once you get to the washes it's all downhill you know with the with the highlighting after and then finally ending up with the this verdigris patina is just a joy to paint on because it really it really finishes the look makes makes your model look more realistic and um, just horrifying on the battlefield so so thanks for watching I, I hope that for all of you budding or re-emerging vampire counts players who have to paint a whole horde of these that this video was hopefully a little inspirational to you or that you got some some new tips or techniques or or maybe you just wanted someone to paint along with you and you're playing this in the background while you're doing your own skeletons so here's a tutorial or boss tutorial on how to paint a less armored skeleton for vampire counts or for tomb kings um, and I wish you all the best hope you're having a great weekend and we'll see you in the next video Say goodbye, Igor. Goodbye, Igor.